Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here. Today we're talking about the producer's letter and the road to the worldwide version of War of the Visions. And so I want to recap what we know about it, some rationales, and then give some thoughts about uh, it's unrolling today now that we have a, a whole bunch of new content for the Final Fantasy V collaboration after they did the special live stream for it, as well as the producer letter li live stream. And so real quickly, let's recap what we know. So first of all, they're going to be combining both the global and JP teams here in a way to help streamline content. Now, uh, JB and I talked about this at length last night on the podcast, so feel free to reference that as well. I'll have the link to the description below. But my general thoughts is that they're doing this as a cost-cutting measure. They are very likely going to be uh, you know, merging certain positions from GL and JP, and those people are going to be allowed to work on other projects like Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, and I would imagine other either gotcha games or things within uh, Square. And so now they're going to rely on that that whale income, if you will, that 2% that sort of maintains their baseline revenue. They're able to cut some costs and they meet a more a profitable margin of what they were realistically hoping to hit for either the current day or I would imagine the near projection future, a year or two years, however long they want the revenue stream to come in. And that's not that the game's not profitable or that it's not doing well. It's likely just not hitting the target that they want, or maybe they have projections that they won't maintain that target. And so they're just making some behind the scenes adjustments to, to do that. So to recap what the net effects to us are, is there a new app? No. Are they combining regions? No. Are we playing with JP players in any way? No. Glex units, no more of those. They're doing away with that. Whatever we get, JP also gets. The GL vision card bonuses, well, we'll keep the ones we have now, but no mention of future ones that Global might have access to. And any other changes at all? No, none for us whatsoever. The only change is that they're greatly accelerating our timeline here where they want us to essentially be in step with JP for when content is released, anywhere from simultaneous releases to a week to at least within a month. So that's really what they're doing and they're expediting our timeline to do so. And so let's talk about the pros and cons from our perspective of the consolidation. Well, there's going to be less content dropped or forgotten by accident, at least I would hope, where you have a single team that can more cohesively work on things. I would would hope that secondarily here glitches get fixed faster so for instance the quick pick bug that occurred a couple weeks ago where one of the tiles was not functioning properly well they just canceled quick pick and i would imagine they weren't able to re-implement it because there's probably some resource constraints and like timing certain things where it's like listen guys this was the week that quick pick needed to happen we can't dedicate it to the next week because we have other things going on the glitch threw that off i would hope with a new team here that when something like this happens, it can be remediated faster and we don't lose out on content like that. You'd also technically get faster access to content and collabs where, you know, if something drops in JP, you're going to get it a week or a couple of weeks later. So you don't have to wait as long for that thing you might be excited for. And then you should hopefully get faster access to the quality of life changes where they're continually making menu improvements and things that JP gets them obviously months ahead of time, but their quality of life changes because we don't like doing them. So it just means we get them faster, which means less time that we're unhappy with the menu quality of lives, right? So there's a fair amount of pros and the cons are really a, a much shorter roadmap means that you have less visibility to making bad investments in characters which is a bad thing. And let me rephrase that. You might look at a character like Ferris, who came out as a great water unit overall, but then a week later or two weeks later, you get Bridal Aliyah, who completely makes that character irrelevant. And now everything that you had spent and all the hopes and all the things you wanted to do with that are instantly dashed. And so losing that roadmap makes you feel less good about characters you're having high hopes for. And so it's very possible you could pull on a unit and just turns out weeks later, they're awful and you can't use them. That short-term resource crunch also means we're missing out on essentially three months of login bonuses, bundles, daily purchases, content drops, all of those things that would allow us to keep up with how much we have to spend in the game overall. That's obviously a bad thing, and hopefully Gumi compensates us for that. They've made some insinuation they have. We'll talk about that more in the slide, though. And then the worst thing about it is that there's no more global exclusive content, Glex for short. We will both be getting them simultaneously. That obviously kind of stinks because there was something fun to be had for knowing that you had a projected roadmap and then you get a cool X factor to shake things up. And quite honestly, for a while, I actually thought Glex was a very smart strategic thing for them where if they made a, an error of sorts in the balance of the game in JP, let's say like Black Rose Elena, or maybe the water meta went on for too long. Well, dark meta went on for so long, they made Elena to come in there as a light unit. They knew that water meta with Celeste and Asterisk went on for a while, so they gave us Esther. And it seems like they always kind of made those Glex units come in so that they could make the balance of the game a little more cohesive. So losing that obviously hurts. And so now today, we've gotten the release of a bunch of, you know, Final Fantasy V things and getting that first look at what they 
hopefully plan to do now that it's public knowledge and they've kind of communicated things. This is the first chance we get to see what Gumi has plans for when it comes to compensating us for this big strategic change. And so per usual, those of you that know my content, I do things with a report card. And so this is my worldwide report card here. I'm going to grade Gumi on everything that they've done so far. And so I've kind of creatively repurposed each one of these attributes as how as it pertains to the new worldwide release. And we'll talk through it. So the effective HP, meaning how durable and how strong has their first attempt been so far? Well, I'm giving it a D here. Uh, everyone can see through that first phase initiative, the road to worldwide, where they've given us tickets for how much viz we've spent on summoning banners so far. Uh, that's not a bonus. They've phrased it as such that, hey guys, we're going to give you these tickets so that you can summon some things and get some resources as a way to compensate what you might not have had, but we were getting that anyway. So this is really not a benefit or a value add from what we were already expecting slash entitled to anyway based off their communication it's just a repurposing well let's talk about the survivability of war the visions that was with this implementation and what we've seen day one of what things have been unveiled and the survivability of the game i'm giving it a d here uh, you know you're forcing higher resource spend at this time and making people feel crappy about their investment will make this game fail much faster if you make people pull things that they're really excited for and then you dash their hopes and usher in a completely new meta and don't give them any foresight to making up what they might have lost now let's talk about the uh, the damage that this could do if not handled properly. And I'm actually going to say this is a strong point. This is an S tier of potential damage they could do. Their producer's letter and the very vague roadmap at this time have really little impact on our trust when what we see in front of us here at this current time, and we'll go through that on the next slide, what we've observed for changes in terms of resources from today, what they've given us. Uh, really doesn't do a lot to build up a lot of equity. It seems like another phase here is that social media initiative where the amount of comments they get on things will correlate to how many reincarnation UR scrolls we get. And that's cool for reincarnation. That actually is a very big thumbs up, but does really nothing for acquiring shards of characters, of being able to pull characters and vision cards and things of that nature. So yeah, the damage is really good, really good here from the perspective that it could be incredibly damaging if they screw this up. Now, agility in terms of the timeline of how fast things are, I'm giving it a D here. The speed of the change drastically affects our experience in a negative way. So the agility leaves a lot to be desired just in how fast these changes are going to be happening in September, where that's only two months away, not even a month and a half away from occurring right now. When we consider all the planned things we're getting in the meantime, the accuracy of how accurate they were in unveiling this so far in the first day impressions, I'm giving it a D here. They completely swung and missed on giving us any hope and reason to believe that we'll be made whole for what they're doing behind the scenes to consolidate things and speed up our timeline. And on that same note, the evasion in terms of how evasive Gumi is here, I'm also going with the D here. There is no dodging the criticisms that we have both across the subreddit, the Discord, I'm imagining the content creators that I've talked to and how they feel as well. Uh, yeah, the evasion here in dodging those criticisms is exceptionally bad here, not one of their strong points. Now, movement, I'm also going with a D here. It uh, needs considerable work right now to get from point A to point B. The movement is very bad overall as we go from where we are currently to where they hope to get us in a month and a half's time. Now, the auto ease of use, I'm going with a D here. There's nothing seamless or easy or automatic about what they're doing whatsoever it seems like a lot of uh, lip flapping and really nothing to show for it so uh yeah not automatic in the least and the game disruption though another really strong point s tier here for the game disruption it's one of the most disruptive things that they possibly could have done for us and our expectations on our actual physical gaming experience so this is another really strong grade i don't normally give out s's but absolutely worthy of it now for passive abilities here i'm going to go with an s as well they're very passive in signaling that they're trying to build up goodwill where obviously they know that people are kind of scared and apprehensive and they're already not feeling great from the past three months and so in building up that equity and kind of giving us that carrot to make us feel good about moving forward uh, they've been very passive exceptionally passive in building up that goodwill and giving us some things that we go okay wait a minute they actually do realize what we're going through and so i'm giving them an s for exactly how passive they are at this moment now counter abilities going with a d here they really don't have any counters for us wanting to leave we are not obligated to play this game at the end of the day these are just pixels they have no retaining value whatsoever even if you were to try to sell a kraken account you wouldn't get 
even a tenth of a percent of what you spent to build it up. They have no counterplay to us wanting to leave. We'll just drop it and we don't lose anything because at the end of the day, it's just pixels on the screens. So it would really just be buyer's remorse is the only thing that would hold us onto the game. Now, the overall job that they've done, the overall kit so far, also going with the D here. A terrible job on the first day. A seeing what might be the future here if today is any indication and obviously they knew what we were going to potentially be feeling they obviously built it up with a very special live stream Hiroki came on two days in a row to do a live stream this is obviously a very big shift in the game a very big shift behind the scenes so this is a very much intentional thing they've done that they certainly did have time to plan for and this being the first snapshot that we get of the potential things to come in terms of alleviating some of those concerns definitely getting a D here that they've just done a flat out terrible job on what they've offered for day one for a final overall grade of an f uh, absolutely awful first week rollout uh, it's made all of their words ring hollow so far in terms of we're going to appreciate your understanding we're going to make sure that you get the things that you need while you bear with us in this time and we thank you so much and that thanks is really not present whatsoever we got some hiroki gifts that are par for the course what we normally get anyway thanks for those we also got some tickets where you could summon something so i got an, i got a ur antler today for free that was pretty cool and that u antler that i got for free well what did i have to give up i mean you could make a case it was a fair trade we'll talk through it i mean today uh the viz tickets were already going to be given for the summoning that's not a bonus for us as compensation and uh for the whales they do virtually very little as if you've already pulled a ton on banners that means you likely already have the characters which means the tickets you're summoning will likely give you stuff you already have so Thank you for the Mog Shop medals, I guess. Uh, they've removed the Viz from the multi-stages. Used to be, if you go into your screen, when you complete one or three or five of a multi-stage, you'd get a couple different seals and you'd get 100 Viz, typically. They got rid of the Viz and they instead give you double the amount of seals. So you get four or five seals, which, uh, for those of you that have seen, they're also part of the Guild Raid tickets, which I have like a thousand of. I literally have like a thousand seals. So not a resource we desperately need that's a pretty bad trade they've also removed the 10 shards from the daily guild purchases in the first week here where you used to normally be able to get up to 70 free shards they've removed that in the current store they also have reduced the amount of shards in the 2k paid package from 80 down to 40 used to give you 80 shards in that event shop of whatever collab it was and now they have reduced the amount of shards there uh, there's no special viz packs or bundles for the the final fantasy 5 collab to incentivize spending typically in the past they would give you like a one or two bundles like a easter bundle or a holiday bundle and it would be either some kind of paid shards for the characters or it'd be an exceptional deal in terms of money for the viz or maybe it'd be some resources that you desperately needed not something like equipment seals it would be something like the ur antlers or the reincarnation scrolls and that's really non-existent at this time this first week in the shop there's no bart's login bonuses or daily spending bonuses where you know you get to spend a little bit every day and you collect something every single day they did lena instead who was a unit that you do have to pull for they a couple weeks ago removed vision card shards or vision card medals it's incorrect vision card medals sorry i just did a quick ninja edit on the screen they removed the vision card medals on the fives the five step a few weeks ago so that's not new but that is something that they already started doing as part of the resource crunch there's no 2k paid option for the new vision card and there hasn't been in quite some time to acquire a vision card in that way and they've been exceptionally vague about the future compensation or even the current compensation we keep talking as if like we're about to start the crunch we already started the crunch they already bumped up vision cards and unit releases ahead of time they also they already got rid of things like the winter or summertime ma2s and upgrades jp that already got them we don't have them at this time so not only have we been feeling the crunch because they already started that acceleration but they say there's a part two and three for the roadmap to worldwide and if parts two and three are anything like part one it's really going to do nothing to help us acquire new characters for cheaper, to give us more visibility to their usage, to give us confidence that we're going to get value for that character when we do pull for it, or making the game more accessible to a wider audience of people, whereas we've seen the top end of the game and its whales and spenders, myself included, have been absolutely bled dry and can no longer afford to support the game in the way we had, which is unsustainable quite frankly speaking, and you're already seeing the top end players already leave the game en masse, and this no doubt is going to accelerate that if they keep doing what they're doing after this first day. So that's it for now. Hopefully this is informative. Thank you so much for watching. Per usual, comments, critiques, criticisms, all in the comment section below. And that's it for now. I'll talk to you all soon.